specifically to the Washington tool, there was a question about when it's filled out. Uh, the response is, for that one is that it's typically filled out no more than 24 hours in advance. That's due to the fact that both the forecast as well as field conditions can change quite rapidly. And so typically these tools uh, should be done prior to every manure or fertilizer application to a field and no more than 24 hours in advance. And I believe that's pretty similar for all of the different tools. Uh, for the rest of the group, if anyone wants to answer a question, we had one come in about um, can these tools help to adapt to climate change impacts? And um, maybe if anyone wants to answer specifically about how their tool uh, can work into that. Um, I think that I can um, answer for the Washington tool at least that uh, we're typically looking at very short term and I guess for adjusting the climate change impacts it just adjust, adjusts more so to the current conditions which can assist with that maybe in the future as that goes forward. So I'm not sure about long term looks and impacts all these tools as you know so are pretty short term um, reviews. and. Zach or Tony, I'm not sure if your tools also, you have a similar output or if you have a longer term future look that has a climate change um, piece to it. Sure, we, I mean, we have long term climate projections, um, but they, they wouldn't, I don't think they would inform short term nutrient management planning. We're talking about projections that go out, you know, 50 to 75 years. Um, so for, more for strategic, perhaps strategic planning. Um, than sort of operational planning. Yeah. Uh, Tony, we had a question for you specifically. Uh, talking uh, comment and then question is that farmers historically make decisions on a field by field basis for uh, manure or no manure decisions. So are you thinking that farmers will begin to manage sub areas within a field differently? Or do you think that identification of subfield risks will still lead to a go no go decisions for the whole field? Um, kind of like the phosphorus index, I think you know if, if enough of a field is subject to runoff generation, at least when they look at it, just in terms of its connectivity to a stream, it usually you know, leads to a higher risk being assigned to that field. And, and in the same sense, um, on a daily basis, you know, if enough of a field was saturated, and, and I guess that's really down to like individual judgment, but you know, if 30, if a significant fraction, 30, 40% or more of the field is saturated, um, looking at some projection of where runoff is likely to occur, it would probably rule out, I mean, it's hard in Pennsylvania to manage, you know, you, like precision managed small fields that are, you know, following topography that tend to be irregularly shaped. Um, it's not like, you know, some of the larger fields in the Midwest where you could kind of skip over areas that are saturated because you know, the fields are so large, like in Pennsylvania, uh, and I'm sure the same is true in a lot of sloping regions. Um, if enough of a field was wet uh, or projected to generate runoff, then that would probably rule out the whole field just because it would be too hard to to manage at such small scales. I mean, Zach might want to opine on that too, um, but I think, you know, once, and, and, you know, take into account too that like, you know, these are, you know, these are forecasts and, you know, and as we, you know, when we look at, um, you don't want to get a false sense of precision when you're looking at these saturated area, at least in terms of the ones that we produce. I mean, they're deterministic in a sense. So you don't get a sense for the whole range of possible outcomes. And I think that's kind of an important point too to make is that, you know, I think all these tools eventually will progress to the point where they're going to be doing more in the way of probabilistic type forecasting, especially if end users find value in that. Um, kind of like when you go onto a weather forecast and they're giving you a sense for the probability of rainfall or the probability of rainfall over some amount, like over an inch. Well, in the same way, you could look at, well, what's the likelihood that the runoff contributing area is, is this here? And what's the likelihood that doesn't extend further up the landscape? or that it's closer to the stream. Under some, you know, forecasts, when the rainfall forecasts are all coming in line and all pretty much in agreement, uh, then you might find that runoff contributing areas are kind of more tightly uh, organized around an area, but you might find for other kinds of storms with a lot of uncertainty, 
that those contributing areas could vary quite a bit in size. And, and so having, knowing that information maybe helps you make better decisions, um, but it's also helpful just to understand the uncertainty of the inputs, that, you know, the forecast inputs, like the rainfall uh, that's coming in. So anyway, uh, I guess to really try to just answer the question specifically, it's, it really depends on the end user's judgment and how much of the field is saturated. And in areas like Pennsylvania, I think um, if enough of it was saturated, it would probably rule out, you know, the field. Uh, yeah, I would agree. I mean, especially, like you said, in the areas we've been working with relatively small fields, um, enough saturated air would probably rule out the whole field. It's hard to manage those such small areas. Like that picture I showed in my presentation, the producer's not going to go out and apply manure between those two saturated areas. Okay, uh, another question we had is any thoughts on how these tools can help with the implementation of specific cover or uh, conservation practices such as cover crops? Do you want to take that one, Zach, your tool kind of implements that, and Tony, yours is a little bit more in that realm as well? Sure, so, so I suppose you could look, you know, you could do some sort of post hoc analysis and, and look at the frequency with which certain areas are saturated or predicted to be saturated and perhaps those would be good candidates for something like you know riparian buffers if they're near a stream or um, perhaps cover crops to keep you know soil in place things like that um, but there you know at least in, in, in ours there's nothing explicit about implementing conservation practices but I think it could be something that a producer you know could 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 do on their own 